581, Lord, you slow to humble servant. presence. 
We acknowledge that too often we go through the motions of our faith, distracted by the routines of life, and we forget to connect with you in a deep and meaningful way. But today we long for something more. We desire to be truly present with you, to experience your transforming power in our lives. As we gather in your name, we ask that you would cleanse our hearts and renew our spirits. Help us to lay aside any distractions, doubts, or fears that may keep us from fully embracing your love. Speak to us, Lord, and guide us in your truth. <clears throat> may our worship be genuine, not just in the words we say, but in the way we live our lives. Transform us from the inside out so that our service to you and to others reflects the deep and abiding love that you have shown us through Christ. We offer this time to you, trusting that you will meet us here and change us in ways that only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tell me what is in this bottle. Any guesses? 
air. So if I squeeze this bottle, what's coming out? Air. Okay, good. What about in this bottle? So if I took the lid off of this one and squeezed it, what would come out? Water. Water all over the floor. Which is why I left the lid on it. <laughs> would you agree that whatever I want to come out of the bottle, I have to have the bottle first, right? This is similar to what the Pharisees and Jesus are talking about in today's scripture. They're talking about this idea that whatever fills you is what comes out of you. The story starts with the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders during Jesus' time and place, scolding Jesus because his disciples were eating unwashed food. The Pharisees are concerned that if a person eats a lot of unwashed and unclean food, then they would be filled up with unclean food. And then only unclean actions like lying, cheating, and stealing would come out of that person. But Jesus disagrees with part of what the Pharisees are saying. Jesus tells the Pharisees that eating clean food does not stop people from doing unclean things like lying, stealing, and cheating. Jesus then says that people lie, steal, and cheat not because of what they eat, but because their hearts are far from God. It is true that our bodies are healthier when we eat healthy food. But it is also true that filling our hearts and minds with God's Holy Spirit and love helps our hearts be loving and our minds be just. And it is this understanding that Jesus is teaching the Pharisees in today's scripture story. Jesus is saying that our hearts are meant to be filled up and overflowing with God's Holy Spirit and perfect love. Then because our hearts are overflowing with God's love, there is no room for the fear that leads to lying, stealing, and cheating. And when we are overflowing with God's perfect love, that perfect love is what we have to share with others. Just like with the bottles, whatever is in our hearts is what comes out of time. Which is exactly why the example Jesus gives us is so meaningful. We see Jesus fill up with God's love. And then he shares God's love with others. And we can do the same thing. One of the results of following Jesus and doing what Jesus taught is that we will be filled up with God's love. Which is what we will then have to share with others. Repeat after me this prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus who, teaches us who teaches us how to fill our hearts with your love and then share your love with others. Amen. Stand that we sing from number 384. Love divine, all loves accept.
my works to the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful scribe. You are the most handsome of men. Grace has been poured out on your lips. No wonder God has blessed you forever. Your divine throne is eternal and everlasting. Your royal scepter is a scepter of justice. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. No wonder God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy more than all your companions. All your clothes have the pleasing scent of myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. The music of stringed instruments coming from ivory palaces entertains you. The royal princess is standing in your precious jewels. The queen stands at your right, dressed in the gold of Ophir. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We stand as we see in hymn number 382, Have Thine Own Way. Jesus is breaking yet another barrier 
to belonging. The traditions and rituals that once excluded the Gentiles are no longer the gatekeepers of God's kingdom. As much as this passage is about breaking down barriers, it is also about raising the bar for what it means to truly belong to Christ. Jesus isn't just offering inclusion. He is also offering transformation. As he discusses the nature of true defilement with the Pharisees, the crowd, and finally his disciples, Jesus makes it clear that following him is a radical departure from merely adhering to tradition. Discipleship requires a deep change in both mindset and action. This shift is crucial for us today as we consider our mission and ministry. The call to follow Jesus isn't about clinging to rituals or outward appearances. It is about allowing our hearts to be transformed by his love and grace. As we dive into today's scripture, we will explore how Jesus calls us to prioritize internal purity over external rituals. He challenges us to purify our hearts and how this inner transformation empowers us to embrace our mission with authenticity and compassion. In a world that often values tradition over transformation, we are called to something deeper. We are called to serve, not just with our hands, but with our hearts that reflect Christ's radical love and, inc and inclusion. Our scripture reading today comes from Mark chapter 7. Verses 1 through 8, 14 and 15, and 21 through 23. Please stand for the reading of our gospel. The Pharisees and some legal experts from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating food with unclean hands. They were eating without first ritually purifying their hands through washing. The Pharisees and all the Jews don't eat without first washing their hands carefully. This is a way of observing the rules handed down by the elders. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing themselves. They observe many other rules that have been handed down, such as the washing of cups, jugs, pans, and sleeping mats. So the Pharisees and legal experts asked Jesus, why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food with ritually unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you hypocrites. He wrote, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is empty, since they teach these instructions that are human words. You ignore God's commandment while holding on to rules created by humans and handed down to you. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing outside of a person can enter and contaminate a person in God's sight rather than the things that come out of a person contaminate the person. It's from the inside, from the human heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual sins, thefts, murders, adultery, greed, evil, deceit, unrestrained immorality, evil insults, arrogance, and foolishness. All these evil things come from the inside and contaminate a person in God's sight. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Have you ever found yourself driving home from work only to realize you don't remember the journey? You went through the motions, stopping at the red lights, turning at familiar intersections, but your mind was elsewhere, caught up in the tasks of the day. It's as if you are on autopilot, doing what you were supposed to do 
without truly being present. Sometimes our faith can feel like that. We go through the motions, attending church, saying the right words, performing our duties, but if we are honest, our hearts aren't fully engaged. We are fulfilling expectations, but the passion, the connection, the transformation isn't there. This is exactly what Jesus confronted in the Pharisees. In the first verses of our reading today, we encounter a powerful moment where Jesus confronts the Pharisees and their obsession with ritual purity. These religious leaders were so focused on outward appearances, washing hands, following traditions, that they lost sight of what truly matters, the condition of their hearts. Jesus doesn't mince words when he rebukes them. He quotes the prophet Isaiah saying, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It's a sharp accusation, one that challenges us to examine our own lives. Are our actions driven by genuine faith, or have we fallen into the habit of going through the motions, honoring God with our lips, but keeping our hearts distant? In the last two sections of our reading, Jesus shifts the focus from external actions to internal motives, teaching that it is not what enters a person from the, in, from the outside, the correct food, that defiles them, but what comes out of the heart. Like with our bottles earlier, the bottle containing air, air came out. The bottle containing water, water came out. Jesus lists various sins that originate, originate from within. Evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, envy, slander, arrogance, and foolishness. These things, Jesus says, are what truly defiled a person. This confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees isn't just about first century religious practices. It is a timeless lesson for us all. It forces us to reflect whether our devotion to God is authentic or simply an adherence to tradition. Are we like the Pharisees more concerned with looking religious than with being truly transformed by God's love? This passage pushes us to consider the depth of our faith and the motivations behind our actions. As Christians, it is all too easy to fall into the routine of religious duty. We attend church, serve in ministries, and participate in outreach, but sometimes these actions become just that, routine. The motions are there but the heart is missing. We can become so focused on fulfilling our obligations that we forget why we are doing them in the first place. When our actions aren't fueled by deep, sincere love for God and others, they lose their power. True service must originate from within, a heart that is continually being renewed and reshaped by Christ. In serving God, this inner transformation is critical. Our service should be an authentic expression of our faith, not just an item we check off our list or a tradition we follow. If we prioritize outward conformity over inner transformation, we miss the mark. Our service isn't about meeting expectations or maintaining appearances. It is about glorifying God with lives that are genuinely changed by God's love. Jesus' conversation with the Pharisees is not about health practices or rituals, but something far more significant. It is about the right way to honor God. 
in every aspect of our lives. I think it is safe to say that most of us share a desire to live out our faith in tangible ways, to love our neighbors, to make a difference, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We want to be braver in our relationships, to practice faith, not just talk about it, and to help the world be a better place. Especially for those who identify as spiritual refugees or church burnouts, there is still deep longing to move beyond the motions of organized religion. They have heard enough sermons to last a lifetime and want nothing to do with the system anymore. But they still long to be a force for good in our hurting world. Even those who regularly attend church often express a desire for a more practical, less theoretical faith. A faith that leads to real change in the world, starting with their own lives. I resonate deeply with that stirring. As a pastor, I often find myself in the midst of messy, beautiful, and eclectic Christian spaces that defy tradition and traditional expectations. The heartbeat of these spaces is not found in ritual or routine, but in genuine relationships and lived out practices. It is in these untraditional spaces, often outside the confines of Sunday morning worship, where I witness firsthand the profound impact of truly transformed hearts. When we prioritize and, and interchange, our actions become authentic and impactful, reflecting the work God is doing within us. But there is an essential truth we must recognize here, one that Kathy Escobar so effectively, effectively addresses in her book, Practicing Changing Yourselves to Change the World. Kathy Escobar says, we cannot truly serve others until we first do the work of healing ourselves. This inner healing is often invisible, yet it is crucial. Without it, our service risks being hollow, driven by duty <coughs> rather than love. That's why I've encouraged our church to read Escobar's book, Practicing Changing Yourself to Change the World. The very first step to effectively minister to others is first to allow God to work on our own hearts. This internal work is often unseen, but it is essential for authentic and impactful service. When we address our inner life, our thoughts, attitudes, and motives, our actions naturally align with God's will. This has a profound impact on our ministry. When our hearts are truly transformed, our service is no longer just a series of tests. When we have the love of Jesus in our hearts, our serving becomes a genuine outpouring of Christ's love. The authenticity of our actions resonates with those we serve, making our ministry more effective and life-changing. People can tell when we are serving out of <coughs> obligation versus when we are serving out of love. The difference is unmistakable, and it is what makes our service truly Christ-centered. This knowledge challenges us to prioritize spiritual discipline that foster interchange, prayer, meditation on scripture, and self-examination. As we grow in these practices, the inner work God is doing in us will be reflected in our external ministry, leading to more profound impact in our community and our world. Remember that feeling of being on autopilot, going through the motions, without really being present? It is easy to fall into that same pattern in our spiritual lives, doing all the right things, but missing the deeper connection, the genuine transformation. But 
God calls us to so much more. When we allow God to transform us from the inside out, we step out of autopilot and into a life of authentic, heart-driven service. Our actions become more than just tasks. They become a powerful testimony of God's grace and love. The call to serve isn't just about what we do. It's about who we are. It is our faith being lived out as action. It is about letting God change our course so that everything we do flows from a heart that has been reshaped by God's love. As we embrace this transformation, our actions, our ministry, and our service will no longer be routine. They will become a true reflection of Christ's love. A love that just isn't going through the motions, but a love that has the power to change the world. One heart at a time. Let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging our need for your grace and guidance. You are the source of all life, the one who sustains us in every moment. We thank you for your constant presence in our lives, for the ways you walk beside us both in joy and sorrow, and for your unfailing love that never lets us go. Lord, we confess that we often fall short of living out the faith we profess. We get caught up in routines, focusing on outward appearances while neglecting the deeper transformation you desire for us. Forgive us for the times we have honored you with our lips, but our hearts have been distant. Draw us closer to you and renew our commitment to follow you with all that we are. We lift up to you the needs of our community and our world. For those who are hurting, lonely, or burdened, we ask for your healing and comfort. For those who are struggling with difficult decisions, grant them wisdom and peace. For those who feel lost or disconnected, surround them with your love and lead them back to you. We pray for our church that we might be a place where your love is not only spoken but lived out in tangible ways. Help us to be a community that reflects the heart of Christ, reaching out to those in need and offering hope to the weary. Strengthen our ministries that they may bear fruit for your kingdom and bring glory to your name. Lord, we also pray for our world, so often torn by conflict injustice and suffering. We ask for your peace to reign in the hearts of leaders and citizens alike, that we might work together to build a world that honors you and cares for all your children. Give us the courage to stand up for what is right and to be instruments of your peace in our daily lives. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts for communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As we come to this time of giving, let us remember that our tithes and offerings of time, talent, and resources 
are a sacred act of worship. In giving, we are acknowledging that everything we have comes from God, and we are expressing our trust in His provision. In the same way that God invites us to serve with transformed hearts by His love, God also invites us to give with the same spirit of generosity and gratitude. Our offerings of time, talents, and resources are a way to participate in God's work, supporting the ministries of the church and extending his love and care to those in need. Will the usher please come? Holy God, we ask that you bless these gifts we give back to you for the building of your kingdom. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our praise and praise. We gladly and joyfully thank and praise you, our Lord and God. For you created all things from the overflowing of your goodness and made us your beloved in your covenant of grace. Out of the long winter of our estrangement, you called us to arise and come away with you, because the springtime of our salvation was at hand. In fulfillment of your own purpose, you gave us birth by your word of truth, so that we would become the first fruits of his creatures. In your son Jesus, you set us as a seal upon your heart, and in his cross and resurrection, you showed that your love was stronger than death. And so we join our voices with the heavenly throng, singing the hymn of your eternal glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Transforming God, you long for us to become holy like you. Through this gathering of reconciliation and word of truth and embodiment of peace, you fill us with bread for the journey. In the power of your Holy Spirit, make all who participate in this blessed meal doers of your word and not hearers only. By your same Spirit, bless this food and drink that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gentle God, you call us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Embolden all who have no one to listen to them, that in their distress or dismay or disease they may meet friends, receive justice, and find you. Give wisdom to any who have something to say, that they may speak your words. Live your hope and draw others to your truth. Bless those who struggle with anger, that their frustration may turn to good work and their sense of deep wrong yield a pursuit of righteousness. Hasten the day when there is no more grief or sorrow. But you are all in all, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as one community, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. This is not a United Methodist table. This is Christ's table. By coming in our door today, you are welcome here. This bread is gluten-free so that we can share from the same loaf. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake all of the one bread.
choir sing this morning a song you are welcome here and I hope you know if you're within these four walls that you are welcome here and if you don't know you're welcome see me after worship I'll welcome you. <laughs> but if you happen to be watching on YouTube please know that you are welcome here within these walls also uh, the first is a praise for me and I thank you all for your prayers for me with my pain issues and also for Sally and her daughter Tammy and Tom and all the other prayer requests. I do feel your prayers and I appreciate them and things are progressing. Uh, Dan asked for prayers for Margaret. She's having some heart issues. And Chuck writes, this is the 13th anniversary of Pam being diagnosed with breast cancer, double mastectomy, and not having to go through that again. 
another reason to be grateful for medical science. Prayers for a client of his whose 14-year-old cousin just committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest. No one had any idea that he was that despondent as he had just participated in a track meet and won some of the races. Let us pray. Transform us, Lord. Show us how to be welcoming. Show us where we need to change. In Matthew 7, verses 9 and 10, it says, if somebody asks us for bread, do we give them a stone? If they ask us for fish, do we give them a snake? A snake? No, Lord, we know the obvious stuff. But show us where we might give a sideways glance. Show us body language. Show us word usage. Show, show us voice tone. Show us how to see Christ in everyone we encounter every day. Amen. We stand to be seen the closing hymn number 402. Lord, I want to be a Christian.
to love and serve with hearts that are transformed by His grace. Let us go out into the world with a renewed commitment to live out our faith in tangible, meaningful ways, allowing God's love to flow through us and touch the lives around us. On our church calendar this week, we have a finance committee tomorrow night at 6.30. Next Sunday, we will fellowship before worship. Our men's group is cooking breakfast, and breakfast will be served at 9.30, and all are welcome. Since we'll be gathered for the breakfast in the fellowship hall, there will be no adult Sunday school, but I imagine the kids will probably gather for a bit after eating breakfast. September 10th, we will begin a new study using Tom Berlin's book, Courage. This is a, this is a six week study that meets on Tuesdays afternoons at two o'clock. We are still looking for a couple more communion stewards to help set up and take down the communion elements. Before worship, it's just bringing out the elements and placing them on the communion table. After worship, the cups are washed and the items of communion are put away. As you go back your week, be in prayer for each other. Our church, our community, our nation, and our world. And as you leave our sanctuary, greet those around you with the love of Christ. May the love of Christ transform you from the inside out so that your actions, your words, and your very presence in the world reflect His grace and compassion. Go forth with renewed hearts, ready to serve others, not out of obligation, but out of the deep love that God has poured into you. And as you go, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May His light shine through you, bringing hope and healing to all you encounter.